Welcome back. Time now for the Word on Wall Street. Top investors watching your money. Joining me right now is Cantor Fitzgerald's chairman and CEO, BGC Group chairman and CEO, and Newmark Group chairman, Howard Lutnick. Howard, great to see you. Great to be here with you. Thank you so much for being here. I want to ask you so much. You had the huge liquidation of Signature Bank. I'm going to get to that. But first, give us your assessment of markets here as we begin this new year. Okay, I think rates are going to stay sort of steady eddy. I think all this talk of 175 basis point cuts, that's just way too much, way too much. I think could be 50 basis points, maybe, maybe 75, but that's it. So I just think it's overdone. People are overly optimistic for rates. I think we're going to stay around here, but that's okay. The world is ready for steady. Not only oh, that, that was like a rhyme. But if, you, but if you're going to see six rate cuts in 2024, isn't that in response to a real deteriorating macro story? Correct. Yeah. Correct. The only way you're seeing that cuts if, is if the world falls off. And there's nothing out there that says the world's falling off a cliff. So yeah. I just don't see it. The sky out there is not sort of black and coming in. It's, it's just not that way. So I think a couple of cuts just to show off. But really, a $34 trillion deficit kind of needs a rate. You know, it, yeah. it gets a rate, and I don't know, four and a half, five percent sounds reasonable. And, and with rates sort of uh, higher than where we were in the prior 15 years, you think banks are real well positioned? I do. I think banks are going to do really well. Remember, all these banks had all these deposits earning zero. Now they all make money. All right, we'll talk about the real estate market, but they're going to start trading more. So you'll see the trading divisions go well. So BGC Partners, right, our stock was up 80% last year. Finally, we have rates. Oh, okay. So all of a sudden, there's business and it's exciting. We still only traded seven and a half times earnings because the earnings are jumping with it. But, you know, the bank's going to do well. We're going to do well. It's just, it's a fun place to trade again. So lots of stuff to talk. Remember, all these years you were saying, oh, zero interest rates. It's kind of boring now. Yeah. It's fun to talk yeah, about. The action has arrived, that's for sure. Okay. Uh, in, in step with what you just said, Fed Governor uh, Christopher Waller acknowledged this week, saying interest rate cuts will likely happen, but he's urging the central bank to move carefully. Uh, you know, and, and that's that's a real issue because, you know, if they move too fast, it, it, they get themselves in the same place that we were, right? Don't you remember when we were saying they were moving too slow? Yeah. When did they become fast? Seriously, yeah. when did they become fast? You know what the answer is? Never, never. They're going to go slow because they go slow. Yeah. So their cuts will be much, much slower than people think. Guggenheim Partners Investment Management's Ann Walsh was with me yesterday, and she said that the rate cuts are happening and they're going to start in March. Watch this. We think that, that uh, inflation is starting to look like it's really settling down. Owner equivalent rent is uh, being stubborn in its movement down. But at the same time, PPI reflected what's really happening in our view in the economy. And so, yes, I think the inflation story is a, a really good one. It's on a downward trajectory. And as a result, I think uh, the Fed's going to be given the opportunity uh, to lower rates. Are you on the other side of that trade? I think, okay, maybe 25 basis points, yeah. but I doubt it. I, I just think they go slower. What, inflation is gone? Yeah. Really? Really? What? The same world I live in? No. The same one you live no. in? Oh, it's all better now. So We're all better. just joyously happy. Yeah. Come on. No, absolutely. Come on. Let's talk about banks for a second. And tell me about this enormous trade, uh, liquidating signature. Uh, did you have an enormous reception? How were you able to liquidate all of that so quickly? So it's primarily multifamily in New York, and, you know, the, the interest was massive. I mean, the amount of bidders come in, and so the, we did the transaction, closed it in December. Uh, FDIC was unbelievably happy, but they worked it out because they had the right operators. They in Included the community because, you know, we have affordable housing in New York and you know what New York City is like. You have to sort of make everybody happy. Hard to do. But the FDIC, I think, did a marvelous job. Sixty billion dollar loan sales. And I think what's going to happen is loan sales, which no one talks about, are going to become a huge business because when mortgages on commercial buildings come due, a trillion coming due in the next two and a half years at these higher rates, Right? You're not going to get proceeds, meaning when you have a $120 million loan on a building and someone says, I'll give you $90 million at a much higher rate, mm. that, you throw the keys back to the lenders. The lenders lent okay. Real estate equity, REITs, are going to be in trouble. They're going to get, a lot of them are going to get wiped out. So many defaults, I think $700 billion could default, right? The lenders are going to have to do things with them. They're going to be selling. It's going to be a generational change in real estate coming 
end of 24 and, under, and all of 25, we will be talking about real estate being just massive change, $700 billion to a trillion in defaults coming. Now, fortunately, Newmark's in the, in the business of liquidating, helping, servicing. You know, so we're, we're gonna, everyone's going to learn the difference between those who own the real estate and those who service the people. But I think it's going to be a very, very ugly market in owning real estate over the next, you know, 18 months, two years. This is the piece that the journal writes about today, that the bill is coming due. But, Howard, can you have that kind of destruction without impacting the macro story, without actually seeing a recession this year? So that's a question, right? How about if you wipe $700 billion, right, of defaults, which is hundreds of billions in equity, how does that run through the economy? And I think the answer is everybody knows the train is coming. They're seeing the train coming. It's coming. Maybe it's not a train. Maybe it's a steamroller, you know, yeah. nice and slow, and it takes another year to get there. But I, I think the economy can take it. I think the economy can take it. So okay. I think it's going to be a slower economy. Right. We're going to get a little bit lower rates, lower rates are not going to save the day because we're going to four and a half or four and three quarters. But basically speaking, you're going to see huge losses in real estate equity gains at the banks. The banks are going to kick some tail. They're really going to make money going forward. And uh, I think the economy will hang tough. I'm, I'm impressed with how it's hanging tough. What did the rest of the world look like right now, Howard? Because China reported that they, it had GDP of 5.2 percent for the last three months of last year. I don't know if I'm buying these numbers I'd because, you know, no, let's just do 5.7. Yeah, 5.2. Right. Meanwhile, they've got a property disaster <laughs> underway right now. Oh, come on. I, I, you don't know what the number is, right? Yeah. We don't, don't know, know what the, the number is, is right? Okay. They can yep. say nice things. And OK, but I think I think China's got a real debt issue. They've got a huge debt issue that is internal to itself. And uh, I think it's just going to constrain their growth. And the rest of the world is going to feel it. I think Europe is way behind, right? They're always sort of one step behind America, as you know. And uh, they'll, they'll start to cut as well. But again, they just don't want to cut very much. So they'll be kind of quiet and a little bit of cuts. And I think that's how the world's going to be. Less cuts than people think. Less excitement with the cuts than people think. That's going to disappoint the stock market, as you know. If, you, if they don't cut in March, you can see the disappointment coming. Oh, yeah. And so I think the stock market is in for a rougher ride than people think in the, in the macro view. But no rate hikes means markets are going to open. Fear off the table. Markets are going to open. You're going to see IPOs again. You're going to see business coming. The world is going to open back up again. And there's going to be lots to talk to you about all year long. It's going to be super good. Listen, I don't know if capital markets activity is going to be all that strong if we're seeing this kind of a sell-off in the stock market as it's a disappointment over no rate cuts. But remember, fear has been the thing holding us back. Mm -hmm. So last year it was fear. Okay. You know, you can't go out with the market. So once the peak is over... Well, do, do really do equity markets really care if they cut 25 or 75 basis points? Bond traders care. I get it that bond traders yeah. care. But do equity traders really care that much? I don't think they do. I they think the equity markets, I think, are going to open for investors. Maybe not traders. I, mean, I think the equity market's going to have a tougher sort of rough road up and down, up and down as yeah. we wait to see what the Fed does. But I think the markets are going to be open. Biggest opportunity for Cantor right now in 24 and 25? Um, we're focused on healthcare. We've made a big investment in healthcare. We've hired the two best healthcare analysts in the world, and so we're big on uh, healthcare. I think that market's going to open. The, the these indexes got crushed, got crushed, and yeah. I think these markets are coming back. And so our banking business at Canada Fitzgerald's going to rock. That is great, Howard. It's great to get your take on all of this. Thank you so much. Thanks. Great being here. All right, Howard Lightnick joining us.